Excellent question from one of the students. When you get an object and you download it from the internet, it looks to us like three separate components. Here we've got two halves of the hoop, half A, half B, and then this dangly bit, part C. But mathematically speaking, this is all one object. So when you go to slice it, you drop it in the slicer, you try to select the object and move it, these objects don't move independent of one another. And so when you say on the platform and center, and then actually take a look at the alignment. So let's try that again on platform, center, and then change the, the viewpoint. As we rotate, you'll notice that a lot of the objects aren't touching the build platform. And so this part will fail just because you'll need an alarming amount of support because the objects posted are not set to be printed on a platform. Normally you'd want these rings to be rotated. And so now we're gonna talk about how to break that apart. So. I like using Rhino. It is a non-uniform representative B-spline engine, which means it does a lot of fancy math. I believe it's calculus to break down the parts. And so you can go into Mesh, Edit Tools, and extract uh, a surface based on whether or not it's connected. And so the nice part here is you can just select a mesh and say, you know what, uh, I, I just want this component, and then click Done. And then you just wait for Rhino to do its magic. And you can pick specific degrees, but when the objects are distinctly separate, you just need to click Extract, wait for it to finish processing, and then you should be able to move the other objects independent of one another. So now what you can do after that is then, again, select another shape and be very meticulous not to select part of one shape or another. And you go back into Mesh, Edit Tools, and then Extract, and then by Connected, and then say, which one do you want? We're going to just try and catch this other hoop. And then select Mesh, mesh Faces, Done. Wait for it to finish rendering. There you go. And so each time you do this, you can then select little objects and move them away and then get the subcomponents you want. So one more time, we're just going to edit, collapse, uh, sorry, not collapse, extract, uh, connected, select our third and final object we're trying to isolate. These are redundantly copied. Click done. And then wait for the object to extract. And then independently, you can export these objects and then um, print them and rotate them in, as necessary. So we're asking a lot for the computer right now, which is uh, why we're waiting. <laughs> there we go. Extract. So once you've extracted all three components, you can basically delete the file that's not behaving properly and just say, you know, this is this is garbage. And then we're going to take um, two of the files and just delete them, bring our object to center. And then this is just a politeness thing. You want it centered on the origin. So when someone drops this into the build platform, they can actually, you know, work with the part. So we're going to export this part as uh, earring part C. And then just drop that on the desktop. Ask your binary, it's your choice. And then once that's done, you can just control Z your way or Apple Z or whatever you've got back into your three sub objects and then delete the other two you don't need. Again, centering on the platform is always nice. And then whoever is going to lay this on the print bed can um, line everything up appropriately. So then we would go file, export, and this is earring part A. And then once that's done, we go backwards. And we're going to delete this component, center up our other object around the origin, close enough, and then uh, export. Here Part B. 
So then you have your three objects, and you should be able to just drop them into the platform and manipulate them normally. So picking up where we left off, right, after all of the submeshes have been extracted into their individual STLs, you're no longer facing the problem of this giant build platform being one continuous object, right? When you go to select these objects, they don't move or rotate the way they're supposed to, right? So you can just trash that and then drop in your subcomponents and do your build platform layup. So if you're trying to organize everything, you want to make sure that you can see what you're doing, that you know how you're going to rotate your object, whether it's in the X or Y axis, lay it flat, and then make sure it's on the platform, and you can look from the side view to ensure that that's what's happening. Okay, And then you would take your next component, do the same thing, again, selecting the rotate feature, laying it flat, and then moving it so it's on the platform, and then generally in a an area that's not going to interfere with the other objects. So then drop your last component in, like so. You can just put it in the center, that's fine. Again, on platform. But it's nice when everything's centered about the origin, because you can just see what you're doing, right? So then, at this point, you can take a look from the top, say, yeah, that looks pretty good. You can take a look from the side, say, yeah, that's all on the platform. And then you can um, go back to your top view, and then just select everything, select everything, select everything, control A, and then you can just copy and paste and make as many earrings as you want. Then you go to your settings and you decide, this is a highly detailed object, this is something we're gonna want high detail for, change the standards, and then it can be 100% infill or 10%, whatever you think is reasonable. When the objects are this small, I'll usually go, to uh, two shells and then 20% infill is fine just so it's sturdy. And uh, the jump ring on this will require some support. So we're going to do it with support on and then click export print file. And then this is four earrings. And then we did two shells and 20% infill. Okay. And so that's the nomenclature that you follow. Click save. And then you can write it to an S3G, an X3G, a G code file, a GDREM, whatever your printer has. So once that's done, you just load it into your printer. And that's it.